Whatever you've got, bring it out. I want the best of everything. If you want it, you're going to be successful. So when she gets to the top, the dumbbells are horizontal again. Those are perfect. This is where you leave the excuses and you make some real change. You're going to get in, you're going to get out, and you're going to get the best workouts of your life. Three, two, one. Here we go. Together we're stronger. Trust me. All right, guys, we are here in the brand new bodybuilding.com gym. I'm going to take you guys through a balloon method push pull workout. So, we're going to be hitting every section of the chest. It's going to be great for back width. And I'm Troy Adichan, I'm the co founder of Elf Lion. And I love training balloon method style because we're going to do a combination of heavyweight, lightweight, multiple intensity factors. And I know you guys are going to love this workout. So, we're going to start off with the dumbbell bench press. So I'm going to grab, let's see, I'm going to grab some 90s here for the first set. So I'm going to focus on you know, some nice, slow eccentrics, get the chest fired up. So first set, get the chest nice and loose. So I'm gonna re-rack these. So we're gonna now, we're gonna grab hundreds here for second and third working set. So with these, definitely try to, you know, control the weight, nice and slow eccentric. So make sure you're nice and loose. I keep my rest times about anywhere between like 75 and 90 seconds on here. Troy, we got some questions coming in from YouTube and Facebook. Questions already. Uh, the first one is, what are your thoughts on BCAAs? So BCAAs are really fantastic for intra-workout. You want to make sure that you have an amino acid supplement that has all nine essential amino acids. So. I take Gainerade uh, by Alphaline, and actually today it's 20% off um, everything of Alphaline on bodybuilding.com. So Gainerade, it's got 10 grams of all nine essential amino acids. You can also do it, you know, between meals. If you're cutting, aminos are great for, you know, maintaining your muscle mass. So we're gonna get in here, the second and third working set. I got hundreds here, and I'm really focusing on not rushing this, but try to count, you know, in your head, two to three seconds, explode up. So slow eccentric, explosive concentric. Here we go. If you guys saw what I did there, I started to fail around the eighth rep. So I'm really slowing down that eccentric portion. So that's gonna create more healthy muscle damage. It's actually a good thing because you're gonna create more healthy micro tears in the muscle. 
And if you recover properly, your nutrition is on point, you're actually gonna gain more muscle mass when you're going heavy, focusing on the eccentric portion. So, it's a good set. Uh, Troy, this question from Nick. How many warm-up sets do you like to do? Good question. Depends how I'm feeling. If it, the weather is really cold, like today in Boise, a little bit colder than I'm used to, I'll do three to four. Sometimes I'll feel nice and loose just doing like, you know, one with about 30 to 40% of my heavy working set. And then really, you know, making sure the shoulders are nice and loose. I'll do a warm up set. I'll do something like this. And I just kind of go off intuition. I make sure that I feel really nice and loose because you don't want to go a heavy working set, you know, feeling tight right here in the anterior deltoid. So I recommend at least two, but listen to your body. So I'm gonna go one more set here. So the balloon method, there's gonna be an overload phase, which is what I'm doing right now. So I'm lifting heavy. Then we're gonna get into the intensity phase. So we're gonna do a killer superset. It's really gonna target the upper chest. In fact, the next move, by far and away, my favorite exercise for the upper chest. So let's get into the final set here. So I'm gonna do one more set here of hundreds. All right, here we go. So, you know, going heavy like that and slowing down the eccentric, you're not gonna be as strong, but do not ego lift on chest, guys. Focus on your form, focus on slowing down the eccentric portion. So, that was the first move. You know, three sets, eight to 10 rep range. Yeah. Let me re-rack these hundreds here. So, this next move, you guys are gonna like. All right, so on the dumbbell pullover superset, I think I'm gonna grab, let's go 75s here. So you just need one dumbbell for this move. And I'm actually gonna take off my shirt so you guys can kind of really see the upper chest muscle fibers working on this because if you do this move properly, you're gonna feel it right up here, the clavicular head, which lines all the way up here. Troy, we have a question coming from YouTube from Gaming with a Labrador. Um, how often do you train and what's your uh, split look like? So, good question. Um, I try to train six days per week and I'm a big fan of pretty much like a push-pull leg split. So. Uh, you know, I'll do two workouts a week, push, focusing on chest, focusing on shoulders, triceps. I'll do pull, obviously focusing on back and biceps. And of course, we can't skip leg day. I'll do a leg day where I'm doing quads, calves, hamstrings. So, catch my breath here. So this move right here, it's gonna, it's gonna hit the lats a little bit, but I'm gonna teach you guys how to really feel it more in your upper chest. So. I grab the 75 here. So I'm gonna go one full set. I'm gonna explain to you guys what I'm doing. Yeah. 
All right, so if you guys notice, as I'm pulling the weight through here, this is when you're really gonna feel it in your upper chest. So I'm really, I like to tell myself to uh, like chase the pain, really feel it activate up here, the clavicular head, and really focus on squeezing through. If you just do this with no weight, as you're lying down, you're really gonna feel it right through here. So I did eight to 10 reps there. And then if you guys notice, I'm bringing that dumbbell really close to almost my chin bring it down on the superset right up here. And I'm focusing on contracting. So it's a really unique move. As you drop the weight on the superset, make sure you're not dropping it down here. You're really dropping it up here and you're focusing on, you know, squeezing right here with that upper chest. So it's one of my favorite moves because you're going heavy. It's putting overload and time under tension right here on that upper chest. So if you do it right, you guys are gonna really feel it across here because if you're just doing like dumbbell bench, normal bench, even barbell incline, I have a hard time really feeling it up here. So it's a great move if you guys have a legging upper chest. So throw the shirt on. So we're gonna go three total sets here. And uh, actually, uh, I'll stick with 75. Troy, we got a couple of questions about your pre-workout. Ryan Reedy on YouTube says, Beast Mode Troy, did you drink Supreme for this workout? I actually didn't drink Supreme. I drank the OG Superhuman Hulk Juice. So I take Superhuman pre-workout three to four workouts a week. And then to keep my adrenals healthy, I'll actually take Komodo Pump for two workouts per week. So that's a caffeine-free, stim-free pre-workout. Both are max dose, both are great formulas. And you can actually pick up both of those on bodybuilding.com today for 20% off. So I highly recommend not taking like a high stim pre-workout every single workout, alternating between a high stim and a stim free. Definitely the best of both worlds because you're gonna crush your intense workouts and keep your adrenals healthy. So let's go uh, another set here. I'm gonna stick with 75s. I'm just really trying to go slow and controlled. Once again, guys, I used to ego lift a ton, had very little results. So focus on activation, focus on chasing the pain, really feeling that activation. So once again, tell yourself this, guys. As you're training, the harder it gets, actually slow down those reps. Focus on that squeeze, focus on the activation. So that was set number two. We're gonna go one more set of this. Uh, Sandy on YouTube wants to know, are dumbbells better than barbell for bench press? It's a great question. I prefer dumbbells. I feel like using more stabilizers, you know, obviously controlling the dumbbells. Both are great. I wouldn't skip one or the other, but there was actually an activation study and it showed that the dumbbell bench is actually superior over the barbell bench in terms of like pec activation. But that being said, of course, it's going to vary a bit if your arms are really long, arms are really short. Um, I would say, you know, 70 to 80% of the time, I do use dumbbells over barbells, but I recommend you incorporate both. You got a shout out on YouTube. Liam says, great video. Troy always uh, shares awesome content. Appreciate it. Thank you, Liam. So this is the intensity phase. We're going to go one more set here, and then we're going to head on over to the cables. And this is my favorite finisher. So we're not going to count reps on this. We're actually going to count time under tension. So we're going to go 45 seconds time under tension. 
All right, so catch my breath here. Make sure you guys stay hydrated. Drink a lot of water. Your muscles are like 80% water, so typically I actually have like a gallon jug even sometimes. I'll sip on, sip on Gatorade. It gives me the 10 grams of essential aminos. Today, chugging a bunch of water. A question from YouTube. Movie Mania wants to know, what is your best muscle gaining tip for hard gainer? Are you a hard gainer? Oh, absolutely. I was, uh, I feel like I'm the definition of a hard gainer. Like, if you look at my arms, I have super long arms. Before I started working out, I was like six foot one, 150 pounds. So my best tip would be track your workouts, focus on getting stronger on all the major lifts, and also incorporate time under tension, incorporate intensity techniques. And most importantly, if you're doing all this, make sure that you're at least eating in a small caloric surplus. If you do all that, so for instance, you're doing the balloon method workout, you're hitting all three ways that your body builds muscle. As long as you're recovering, you're resting, you're not super stressed out, you're eating a, in a caloric surplus, which for you, you might have really fast metabolism. So, you know, make sure you're eating enough calories. You do all those things. Just be patient. I know you're gonna see some great results. So, one more set here. So, last set, really try to go all out. So, here we go. Eight to 10 reps each phase of the super set. So if you guys notice, I was really slowing down my reps there towards the end. Once again, the harder it gets, guys, just tell yourself, the harder it gets, focus on activation, slowing down, really feeling it in the muscle. So we're up to the third and final phase of the balloon method chest workout. So we're gonna head on over to the cables. So, so many of you guys are probably doing this wrong. I wanna show you guys a little trick that I do here. So I'm gonna show you guys close to the camera. A lot of you guys are just going right here. I want you guys to try this. Instead of just coming right here, try to go right over left, left over right. So we're gonna go high to low cable fly. So on this one, we're gonna go three different types of cable flies. High to low is gonna hit more of the lower chest muscle fibers. We're gonna go mid, then we're gonna go low to high. So if you do this motion right here, you're hitting more upper chest. If you're pushing down, you're hitting more lower chest. We're gonna do all three, and we're gonna go 45 seconds, time under tension. So I don't want you guys to count reps. Literally take your phone, take a stopwatch, look at it on the ground, and try to go 45 seconds time under tension on this. This is gonna maximize metabolic stress, which is one of the most overlooked phases of muscle growth. So whew, go fairly light on this. So I have it adjusted here at the very top. So here we go. First set. So I'm making it my set here, but once again, try instead of doing this right here, try to go here. Really squeeze. So here we go, 45 seconds. So that's, that's lightweight guys, but 
I'm making it harder. I call it peak activation. So instead of just like rushing through right here, really focus on, this is peak activation, actually holding it. In fact, just try this at home right now. Just literally crisscross your hands, try to squeeze for one hard second. You guys are gonna really feel this. So that was the first set, high to low. Here's an interesting question. Uh, is three movements per muscle group in a workout enough to gain muscle? That's a great question. I would say yes, if you're doing at least, you know, this is nine sets. So if you're doing nine intense sets, you're actually focusing on activation. You're not just like going through the motions. Definitely, and like I said, I do this twice per week. So I'm doing two push workouts. That's 18 total sets of chest in a week. That's a fairly solid volume number. Uh, they asked for a follow-up and I'll allow it. Uh, they also asked uh, why 30 to 40 seconds? So why 45 seconds? So 30 to 40 seconds is going to be the sweet spot for metabolic stress. So there's three science-backed ways that your body builds muscle. You have mechanical overload, you have muscle damage, which is maximized through like the slow eccentrics, and you have metabolic stress. So the sweet spot for metabolic stress is like, you know, 30 to 45 second range. If you're going like two minutes, it's too light of a weight. If you're going for 20 seconds, you're not really tapping into as much as you could with metabolic stress. So even like a lot of, you know, pro bodybuilders will abide by that rule, 30 to 45 seconds time under tension. So I'm gonna adjust it to, I have it at the eight number, if you guys following along. So now, we're gonna focus on more of a, a mid cable fly. So it's gonna really hit the pec major muscle. And once again, before I get into my working set, like this is just going through the motions. This is not good. This is really controlling it and squeezing. So here we go, 45 seconds time under tension. I might help you guys to stagger your feet too. I feel a little unbalanced right here. If I stagger my feet and I keep my chest up, I feel a lot more controlled. Once again, I'm going right over left and I'm going left over right. I'm not rushing back here. Good. We got a bunch of bunch of questions coming in. I'm gonna grab a couple here. Um, uh, how long does it take? Uh, how long has it taken you to get this physique? It's taken me, well, more than 10 years. But to be honest with you, I haven't really trained the proper way for more than say three to four years, and I've, I'm still learning, you know, each day. So. I feel like, you know, if you have fairly decent genetics, you could easily get to where I'm at in five years of just understanding diet, nutrition, training the right way. But for me, it's taken me more than 10 just because, you know, I've made so many mistakes along the way. And that's why I'm so passionate about you guys trying, you know, these blue method workouts because it's gonna help you guys maximize your genetics because instead of just focusing on lifting heavy, like yes, getting stronger, is very important for muscle growth, but not only getting stronger, but you could build muscle with light weights, maximizing metabolic stress. Knowing how to use heavy weights the right way, like I was doing on dumbbell bench. I'm not rushing right here. If I'm rushing right here, I'm not hitting any part of muscle damage. Slowing down the eccentric portion when you're lowering the weight, that's gonna help you guys so much as well. So, you know, hit all three phases. You guys are gonna build a great physique in a lot less time. Uh, this question coming in from Facebook, we've had a couple of questions about uh, rotator cuffs uh, and with chest, that's pretty topical. Right. Uh, Arshad on Facebook wants to know what exercises, uh, what exercise benefits uh, and strengthens the rotator cuff? That's a great question. A lot of band movements are really, really going to work that rotator cuff. Like, you're not going to do much for your rotator cuff if it's already, uh, you know, injured or irritated. 
going heavy on the dumbbell bench. So I definitely recommend, um, you know, I'm sure on bodybuilding.com there's a bunch of great like rotator cuff exercises using bands. I really like using resistance bands for rotator cuff. So we're going to get into the last set here. So we're going to go low to high. So remember guys, low to high right here. This is going to go in line with the muscle fibers of the clavicular head, that upper chest. So we're going to drop it all the way down to number, I guess on here it's number 27. So it's like uh, almost down to the very bottom, one below it. So this one, I like calling these the Wolverine cable fly because I kind of feel like Hugh Jackman with this motion right here. So we're going to go low to high. And once again, this is me going through the motion, but really not doing much to work the muscle. Don't do this, guys. Try to actually raise it up and go right over left and go left over right. So slow it down the eccentric. Oh, yeah. That's actually a little too heavy for me. The low to high is definitely, definitely harder. So ideally I should have gone about, you know, five or 10 less pounds on there, but that's a great move. Like you're really gonna feel it right through here. So low to high, remember guys, any motion right here is gonna hit more upper chest. So that's the full chest workout right there. We got questions just pouring in on YouTube. Uh, Adrian wants to know, what is the benefit of doing this really slow? For example, 15 seconds down and 15 seconds up, or like for a pull-up. 15 seconds down and 15 seconds up. What's the benefit of, uh, is there any benefit to going slow and controlled? Yeah, I think 15 seconds is a little exaggerated. Although it's very challenging on certain moves like, I mean, try to do a pull-up and try to drop down for a total of 15 seconds. That's gonna help muscle damage because you're slowing down the eccentric portion. I hardly ever train like that. I don't know many people who do, but if you want to change it up, you know, try a couple of sets like that. Definitely isn't going to hurt you. Uh, this question from YouTube, how low should we take dumbbells during a negative? How low? How low should you take the dumbbells on a negative? Like on the dumbbell bench press, you mean? I think they were referring to the previous exercise, yeah. Yeah, so. You know, if looking from the side, I would say right when you get to your chest, if you're going right here, you're not hitting the full range of motion. You don't need to go all the way down here. Look at, look at how much stress it's putting on my shoulders. I have really long arms, so if I'm going all the way down to my chest, it's putting so much stress on my rotator cuff. So, you know, if you feel shoulder irritation, you're probably going too low. So for me, it's right before I get to my chest that I'm exploding back up. We've had a couple of... Uh before we move on to the, the back portion, yeah, yeah. if you can re-explain the balloon method. So the balloon method is basically a term to describe the workout as hitting the three science-backed ways that your body builds muscle. This according to the latest muscle building science, uh, Brad Schoenfeld, great researcher. He put an article, a couple research studies out. Metabolic stress, muscle damage, and mechanical overload. Sounds very technical, sounds very confusing. So when, when you're going heavy, when you're going time under tension, when you're focusing on the negative, you're hitting all three of these ways. So it's just a really easy way for you guys at home to hit all three of these ways without feeling overwhelmed and feeling confused by all the science. Whew. So that's going to be the chest workout. So, you know, today, this is a pretty high volume workout. This is 18 total sets in the workout. So. You know, nine sets chest, nine sets back. So on a day like today, you know, I drank, I took a, a full serving of superhuman pre-workout 
Uh, it's going to be max dose and, you know, pump, strength, energy, anti-crash. So highly recommend it, but don't take it every single workout. I recommend not taking a high stim pre every workout. You know, take a stim free, caffeine free pre-workout one to two times per week to keep your adrenals healthy. And I take Komodo pump for those. So if you guys have never tried Superhuman, now is a great day to give it a try because everything is 20% off of Alphaline on bodybuilding.com. So we're going to get into my favorite workout of all time. I love doing back. Back width is so important. So we're going to start off here with a dumbbell one-arm row. And most of you guys, I guarantee, are doing this wrong in terms of back width. So let's see here. I'm going to grab. I'm going to start off here with, we'll do 65, really isolate that form. All right, so you guys could do this, you know, kneeling. I mean, you're going to be standing on this, but you could lean up against, the, you know, the bench or the, the stack with all the dumbbells, or you could set up an incline bench right here. So before I get into my working set, so this is the overload phase. We're going to go nice and heavy on here without sacrificing form, eight to 10 reps. Now, most of you guys are doing this. There's nothing inherently wrong with this. It's hitting a lot of shoulder. I want to teach you guys how to hit your lats more on this. So I want you guys to think about pulling across and back. That motion right there. So that being said here, let me get in my first working set. So, 10 reps left side, switch it to the right side. That is so much harder right on the lat. So I'm pulling across. I'm keeping my elbow in tight to my body. And even try this at home. No weight. Just lean up against something. Pull across and drive that elbow back. Feel the activation right there. A couple of questions from YouTube. This one from Team America. Nice. Uh, what does your daily nutrition look like? Uh, calories, macros, etc. Very good question because without good nutrition, all this, I wouldn't say there's no benefit, but you're really going to reduce the benefits. So my daily nutrition, I'm cutting right now. I'm on a very slow cut. So I started cutting about four weeks ago. I'm eating about 27, and we're between like 2,700 to 3,000 total calories. Um, about one gram of protein per pound of body weight, about 1.25 to 1.5 grams of carbs. So I'm about 200 pounds. I'll eat between like 250 and 300 grams of carbs a day. I'll have one day per week where I'm really low carb. This is gonna help me get in a caloric deficit easier. And then I'll have one day per week where I'm actually higher carb. So that's gonna be like on a leg day, a really intense training day. But on average, if you stacked like all my days together, it would be about you know 2,700 calories a day. But as I transition into my cut, I'll be down to like 24, 2,500. But I don't drop it below that. Um, I don't compete. I just want to be super shredded while still being healthy and not feeling miserable. So, uh, Illuminash on YouTube says, bro. My motivation is getting low. Do you have any tips for increasing my motivation? That's a great question. Um, I just want to preface this with saying, I don't think anyone feels 10 out of 10 motivation every single day. Like, I guarantee you, let's look at the, like someone like The Rock. 
I guarantee you there's days where he's not motivated, but he still puts in the work. So I would say like find a reason to be motivated in the first place. So maybe it's, you know, you want to just be more attractive, you want to be healthier. I think just like finding a specific reason that you want to get in shape, you want to go to the gym, because on days you're not really feeling that motivated, you're going to need that like extra, like that extra notch to really reach that top level. So, you know, for me, I try to take the focus away from myself. I want to motivate other people to get in shape. So if I can push myself on days when I don't really feel great, I know it might help someone else say like watching my video or it might help push someone on days they're not feeling it. So, you know, maybe take the attention away from yourself, take the ego out of it. And, uh, you know, maybe it's about motivating your friends who are unhealthy and who don't want to work out at all. Maybe if they see you going in the gym and getting fit, then all of a sudden they're going to want to do the same and you're going to feel really great about yourself. So, <clears throat> so we're going to go another set here. I'm going to stick here. I really felt good at that weight. I could obviously throw up a lot more weight, maybe sacrificing form, but I'm really trying to feel this. So that was a second overload set. A question from YouTube, does Alpha Lion have a protein powder? Yes, we absolutely have a protein powder. So it's called Goatine. It's not made from goat milk. It stands for greatest of all time protein isolate. And you know the reason we call it that is because it's very digestion friendly. We added Velocitol to increase the muscle protein synthesis. We added estrogen, which is my favorite absorption ingredient. Really good for gut health, so it's delicious. Comes in chiseled chocolate, vein popping vanilla, bulging banana, and today's actually a great day because everything is 20% off of Elf Lion on bodybuilding.com. So that's my post-workout protein, but it's also great to throw into shakes as well. Keith on YouTube says, yo, Troy. I want to know the best and quickest way to get rid of belly fat. You probably don't want to hear this, but a little bit of patience, but let me give you some actionable advice. High intensity interval training is amazing. Um, sprints, they're not very convenient to do. You know, they're a great way to lose belly fat. Of course, you got to be in a caloric deficit. One really great thing you can do, just to add in like a compound effect on your fat loss, Dumbbell squat jumps, literally grab like some five or 10 pound dumbbells, like jumping up as high as you can. I'm not gonna do it right now, but jumping up as high as you can, 10 to 15 reps, five sets, intense workouts, more leg days, you're gonna burn more calories, and being a 400, 500 calorie deficit. So the compound effect of moving more, being a caloric deficit, adding in some high intensity interval training, which is great for your metabolism, great for your hormones, all that combined, do that for 12 straight weeks. I guarantee you, you will lose 12 to 15 pounds of fat. You can't spot reduce, so you know it's not all gonna be fat loss right in your belly. But of course, if you lose 15 pounds of fat, some of it will be in the love handles, lower belly. So we're gonna go one more set here. Uh, three sets overload phase. So once again, Really focus on activation, keeping the elbow nice and tight to the body. It's also a pretty good move for rear delts. You're obviously gonna indirectly hit the rear delts on this. Here we 
we go. Last set here. So that's the overload phase. Done by one arm row, hitting the lats. Let's put the 65 back. Now, whew, we're gonna do a lat pull down superset. Uh, this question from Harry on YouTube. Do I need to change the way I train while I'm cutting? So, not necessarily. Now, I don't know how you train when you're bulking or whatever you're doing, so I'll preface it with that, but when you're cutting, I would say the best thing to do is think about how many calories you're burning. So fat loss is really a calories in, calories out game. So, you know, maybe add in a little bit more volume, but you know, you could keep everything the same. And if you're, you're in a caloric deficit, of course you're gonna lose body fat. So. You know, maybe keep your weight room workouts the same, drop the calories, add in two to three days of, say, high intensity interval training. That's gonna be really good for you. On YouTube, uh, question, are explosive exercises important for muscle growth? <clears throat> One second. Explosive. So I'm trying to, what does he mean like jumping, sprinting? I'm assuming you have fast, fast, fast movements. Um, they're really beneficial because like take a look, just Google sprinter's physique. You will be hard pressed to find a sprinter who's not really ripped. So there's a really incredible compound effect when you do things that work the fast twitch muscle fibers. They've been proven to increase your testosterone They've been proven to increase your human growth hormone. And that's why I'm a huge advocate of the dumbbell squat jump, the sprints. It's also gonna keep you nice and flexible and dynamic. <clears throat> so we're on to the intensity phase. So we're gonna do a lap pull down superset. I'm gonna post up right here. And we're gonna go eight to 10 reps on the first portion. So we're gonna do a lap pull down that's really going to emphasize back width, and then we're gonna do a superset that's gonna really further emphasize your back width. So let me get into the first working set here. So what I was doing there is my hands, you know, right around where, you know, the crease is where it bends. My hands are right on the inside of that. I'm not leaning back as I'm pulling. I'm trying to just pull down and really focus about, focus on driving your elbows down, feel the activation right here. And then the superset, slight bend of the elbows, really focus. You can even feel it with no weight. So. If you guys go all the way here, you might hit the bottom, depending on how your machine is set up. So a way to neutralize that, really drive the elbows back. Feel that mind-muscle connection right here. Uh, question, uh, how important, and if it is important, how important is it uh, to train to failure? Training to failure. So it's not realistic to train until failure every set, but I would say at least a few sets per workout you know, for instance, I'm doing push-pull. There should be at least one set, especially on the overload phase, 
where you were going all out, where you really couldn't do more than say one rep at the most if you absolutely had to on the metabolic stress phase, time under tension. Very important, at least one to two sets to be all out until failure, but I don't think it's realistic to go for 20 sets. And the true definition of training until failure is if there was a gun to your head, could you literally do zero more? Most of you guys, most of your guys' definition of training until failure, you're pro you probably have two to three reps left in the tank. So I would say as a rule of thumb, train as intense as you can and just try to push yourself each workout. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to throw the shirt off here so you guys can really see the lats um, activate on this move. So once again, don't use, I see so many guys, you're like yanking like this using momentum. Really focus on keeping everything stable and then driving those elbows in. So let's go. So for this one, hands a little bit inside shoulder width apart. So really see the last activate. Let me keep that elbow in, drive it right here. A question from YouTube. Besides fitness, what's another one of your hobbies? I love playing sports, so I used to be a basketball player, so anything anything involving basketball, I love playing basketball, I love tennis. So for me, um, basketball, tennis, and also ping pong. So if anyone from a, there we go. So anyone, anyone want to challenge me here at bodybuilding.com on ping pong, I saw the ping pong tables upstairs. I used to play ping pong like every day in my basement. So I would say I'm happiest when I'm not in the gym, basketball, tennis, ping pong. And spending time with my fiance, because she just yelled at me. <laughs> Good answer. Uh, what do you think about uh, five day full body training? Five day full body training. I know, you know, there's some good, good studies on it. I would say, I don't think it's necessary. I don't think it's convenient, but I do think for most people, assuming rest and recovery is good, you'll see more results doing five day per week full body training than you will with say like a bro split of only training you know, having one day for shoulders, one day for arms, one day for legs. So, you know, it's putting more frequency and it's putting more volume on every single muscle group. So if you like doing full body workouts, all the more power to you, definitely do them. But I, I don't think it's necessary to do full body, you know, five days per week. Water Arts on YouTube says, tell Troy, so I'm telling you now, um, that his pre-workout is the best ever. I appreciate that. Does he mean superhuman or Komodo pump though? I don't know, but there's three exclamation points, so it's pretty serious. All right, sounds good. Well, if you guys haven't tried superhuman, which is, you know, the, the nice stimulant based pre-workout with no crash, um, or also Komodo pump, the stim free, today's a great day to try it because everything, um, all the Elfline supplements are 20% off on bodybuilding.com. On YouTube, uh, someone asks, where is Kitty Gaines? I don't know what they mean by that. She's right there. <laughs> She's right behind the camera. <laughs> so we're going to do, uh, let's see, we got one more set. So this is the third set. Once again, I call this the intensity phase because we're doing a super set. So we're doing back-to-back -back moves. It's going to put more time under tension with two different moves right on the muscle. So let's finish strong here. One more set.
So third and final set. Got one more move left. A question from Manny on YouTube. Why do you push pull in the same workouts? That's a very good question. I don't do it every workout, but it is convenient because if you're pushing, I mean, you can start the workout either way. So I could have started with the pull portion. I just chose push, but think about it. If you're pushing, your back is fresh. You're not gonna sacrifice strength at all. So if I started off, say, pulling, and I'm really fatigued from doing a bunch of rows, a bunch of pull downs, I'm gonna be able to put up about the same weight on the dumbbell bench because I'm not fatiguing, you know, the anterior delts, the chest. So there are two muscle groups that really complement each other well, where you're not fatiguing one. So you can keep your lifts fairly heavy on both in the same workout. Um, just to let you know, your ping pong challenge has been accepted by uh, Husky Boy Collective. It's uh, Darren upstairs. Oh, no. Uh, he will challenge you to a ping pong later. Nice. We got to get that. Is that going to be on the live, too? I'm, I wish pong? we had the ping pong table in here. We would. Oh, do man, that. that'd be great. Got to work on my forehand now. I can't go too hard on these last sets now. Um, a question from YouTube. Speaker's Corner wants to know, is cardio helpful when you want to gain muscle? It's definitely, I could say it could be a disadvantage because if you're eating a lot of calories, but then you're going back to like maintenance or a deficit because you're doing too much cardio, it could hurt you. I would say a little bit of cardio year round is good because you're gonna keep your cardiovascular health. You're not gonna be too fatigued during your weight training, but it's definitely not necessary to build muscle. It could help you with your endurance. So it really just depends. If you're doing too much cardio and it's causing you to be in too much of a deficit, then it could be actually hurtful. So, we got one move left, and it's a very, very unique move. So I'm gonna actually demonstrate without weight. So we're gonna do a mid-back row, and it's gonna work the erectors back here, also in the mid-back. So I'm not gonna be going all the way up here. What I'm actually gonna be doing is shortening the range of motion to right here. So this is gonna keep all the tension right on the erectors and the middle back. So I'm gonna grab I'm gonna go 45s on here. So, show you guys. Now, what I mean by going too far up on this, this is doing nothing. We wanna really focus on the mid back and the erectors because most of you guys are probably really weak on this. And actually, I'm gonna go lighter because I forgot we're going 45 seconds. Time under tension here, so I'm gonna grab 40s actually. At least for the first set. So here we go. Start off, weight back on your heels. Don't tip your chest. Keep the chest up. And we're gonna start off here with a pronated grip. We're gonna transition to a neutral grip. So here we go. glad I dropped the weight. So this is most people's biggest weakness, right through the lower back and mid back. So this is a great move if you're trying to strengthen your back for deadlifts. Really focus on shortening. Feel that tension the whole time. A question from Kodiak on YouTube. How does uh, creatine factor into a healthy supplement plan to gain mass for both men and women? So creatine is gonna help you increase, you know, the ATP energy output. So it's very good for increasing your strength. It's not a miracle product, but with that being said, it will help you increase your strength by, you know, a good five, 10%. So I would say, you know, five grams of creatine post-workout is kind of the go-to number. 
And uh, I recommend Jet Gain. So Jet Gains has the five grams creatine, the five grams leucine. It's gonna be the perfect formula to take right after your workout. So it's actually a great day to pick up some Jet Gains because like I said, everything Elfline supplement related, 20% off on bodybuilding.com today. So I take Jet Gains, whether I'm bulking, whether I'm cutting, it's gonna give me the five grams creatine and the five grams leucine post-workout. Dev on YouTube wants to know, what is your best tip for getting bigger lats? Best tip for getting bigger lats? Um, I mean, this, what we've done here, this isn't really a lat move what I'm doing here. You're hitting your lats a little bit, but like the dumbbell going nice and heavy with what I did here, really focusing on, like just do this at home. You feel incredible activation right here. So going overload sets right here and then doing the lat pull down, you know, neutral grip, really focusing on that. Um, there's a bunch of great lat moves. Um, obviously search on bodybuilding.com. They got a great exercise directory, you know, Search, search those moves, add in overload sets for going heavy, find the move where you feel the best activation, go 30, 45 seconds time under tension. So, you know, the balloon method gives you a really easy template where you can pick and choose your favorite lifts. The rule of thumb is just have one lift where you go heavy, you know, throw in two where you might do a superset, then throw in a third where you're really focusing on time under tension, 30 to 45 seconds. <clears throat> So we got last two sets here. So finish strong. This is a good weight for me. Might be too good. I'm gonna try to go two more here, 45 seconds. Once again, this is mid back and your erectors, lower back. So start here, don't slouch. Here we go. Really focus on that mid-back contracting. Tense. So you're gonna feel like just doing one of these right when you get done. So almost too good of a move for that mid and lower back. Here's a question from YouTube. Is it normal that appetite increases after lifting weights? And what is the best advice you can give a female who wants to gain lean muscle mass? Yeah, it's completely normal to be hungrier. In fact, it would be more abnormal if you weren't hungry after a good, a good lifting session. And the best advice for a female would be, I mean, the same advice for a male. Obviously like hitting, trying to get stronger, you know, hitting overload sets, hitting time under tension. And then most importantly, of course, you know, eating in a caloric surplus, knowing what number is your caloric surplus. So, you know, there's a lot of great calorie calculators out there. Um, it's gonna vary a bit because you might be really active, so of course you gotta figure out what your activity level is, and a good rule of thumb is try to figure out what, say, like a 500 calorie surplus is for you, and then eat like that for a week, and see if you gain weight. If you're not gaining any weight, bump it up 200, 300 more, so it's a bit of guess and check. You know, there's no online calculator that knows your exact situation, your exact lifestyle, activity level, so you know, just be patient, do the guess and check, and once you're getting about a pound a week, that should be the sweet spot. Uh, what are some of uh, the best exercises for lower back, or your favorites for lower back? Definitely what I'm doing here. Also, uh, you know, hyperextension. Um, I don't know if you guys have one here, but do you guys have a hyperextension? Oh yeah, right here. So, move it in a little closer. So, this right here, 
This is probably my favorite. Um, I will admit it's like the least fun exercise. I said this for the end of my workout, but yeah, I'll just go right here and crisscross. So, you know, that's a great move. That's almost all lower back. So I would say, you know, those two moves, really fantastic. So we got one more set. Grab some more water for this. Uh, all right, here we go. If you're actually, going back to the lower back question, if you really want to do something crazy, you could do this, and then you could superset it, you know, with body weight hyperextension. That'd be really good for lower back. And of course, deadlift, you're hitting your lower back, but if your lower back is weak, probably strengthen it with these type of moves as well. Here we go. All right. That is brutal. Water Ants on YouTube wants to know, how is the new formula of Superhuman Supreme compared to the last one? So the new formula of Superhuman Supreme, uh, we had a juniper berry, which is one of my new favorite ingredients because it extends the effects and the duration of caffeine and stimulants, and then also the added estrogen, so the absorption is gonna be a lot better. So all in all, it's a really long lasting, hard hitting formula. I guess the, uh, the last question we have, how can people find you on social? So on social, uh, Instagram, at Troy Shred, and then I'm really active on Instagram, also really active on YouTube, so YouTube channel is called Superhuman You. So, I really hope you guys enjoyed this balloon method workout. Most importantly, try it out for yourself. You know, give the balloon method a try for a month, and I guarantee you, you're gonna shock your body into growth. You're gonna see some fantastic results. So thank you guys so much for watching. Really hope you got a lot out of this workout. And you know, any questions, drop them down below. Hit me up on social media, and take care guys. The ultimate strength is having control over your mindset, your discipline your integrity, who you are as a human. You can take control of your body, keep training, and come back stronger. And it's a lot less complicated than you probably think. Let's get started. Three, two, one. Heavy lifting has uplifted myself and all of the athletes I've worked with. It's lifted our spirits. It's helped build some serious bodies that look awesome and do some awesome stuff. When we're developing strength and character, the process of that development is painful and uncomfortable. Lifting weights, painful and uncomfortable. But the end result, you're stronger at the end of the day. I want you to dig deep and find a reason Come on! that will last forever.